Thanks, worship team. I almost don't want to stop worshiping. I trust you guys are well and uh, excited. I'm very excited. And uh, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do during the service is please smile back at me. <laughs> I don't know if it was cold at 8 o'clock or what the problem was, but uh, I think it's just people still need to wake up at that time in the morning. But please smile at me. It will make my life a lot easier up here. Um, last week we started a, a series called Accelerated um, Success and Pastor Louis just started us off with the story of Nehemiah and uh, Nehemiah was the cup bearer of a Persian king and uh, he was quite uh, high up in the ranks there, he was the second in charge, one of the very important people and um, he heard about this the story or, or just the news that the city of Jerusalem, his hometown is in ruins and uh, and, and his heart was filled with, with compassion and, and he really wanted to change something about it and didn't want to see Jerusalem in that state. And, um, and he went before God and he said, God, we have to do something about this. And, um, and Pastor Louis unpacked that whole story for us last week. And, and I think the most important thing about that is how Nehemiah aligned his heart with God's heart. And because he did that, God accelerated the process in his life. God accelerated the process of rebuilding the walls. What a, a three-year project took 52 days. And that's amazing. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, this morning, I'm trusting that, um, that as, as we delve further into the series, because this morning I'm talking about partnering with God um, through prayer, that you'll experience that success in your life. Because success... Is not as the world defines it, but it's really just getting on the same page of where God is. It's really aligning your life with, with Him. And that will bring success to our lives. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I'm talking about partnering with God. Um, I think one thing I, I realized out of last week and just reading uh, in the story of Nehemiah is, Nehemiah didn't just run off and just went and started doing stuff. He really just sought God's heart. And wanted to partner with God and realize that he's in a relationship with God. And that because he is in a relationship, he wants to do this thing um, and, and, and rebuild those city walls because uh, of his relationship with him. And he knew that it was God's heart too. Um, and, um, and this morning, the aspect of that partnership is about communication or prayer. I want to talk about that. How do I pray? When do I pray? What does prayer look like? Um, in various stages of our lives and where we find ourselves at and even grab some of those things from Nehemiah's story um, just to see how, what, is, what does God really want to do um, you know, through prayer. I, first of all, I think a lot of people have got so many religious ideas about prayer. We either pray, say grace before we eat or when you wake up and when you go to bed and this is Luan said, before you seal you have to every week, uh, because then you think when things go wrong in your life, it's because you haven't done enough. So um, I think it's. Uh, I think this morning I'm trusting God that we break that spirit of religion that wants to twist prayer. That you realize it's just really you talking with God, and and God talking back to you. That's pretty much what it's what it's all about. And that His heart as a dad is He wants to speak to His kids, and He wants His kids to come boldly before Him and just speak to Him. Whether it's in the shower, in the car, wherever, doesn't matter. It's a constant communication. Amen? But what is a partnership? So I've got some definitions here. It's a cooperation, association, a collaboration, alliance, um, a affiliation, a relationship, and a fellowship, and very importantly, a connection. Relationship is about connecting. God wants you to connect with Him. Nehemiah heard the story and the first thing he did is he wanted to connect with his dad. He wanted to connect with God because he realized that's where the answer is for him. Because that's his first priority is to be connected. If we disconnect it, it's when then we go and do stuff we should, shouldn't do. We don't pray. We try and fix things on our own. But when there's a connection, things get prioritized. Things take its place. We have perspective. And God's heart for you and me this morning is to partner with Him 
And when I say partner, I mean being connected, be in relationship with Him. And, um, and I'm going to just, um, just speak to you about uh, that aspect this morning of being connected and talking to God. Nehemiah, it says in Nehemiah 1 verse 4, it says, When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now that praying on for days, they say he prayed for four months. It's not a quick popcorn prayer. It was speaking through it. It was talking about it. Can you imagine if Nehemiah lived today? Wakes up gets a phone call, says, listen, your hometown is absolutely ruined. It got bombed. The walls are down. It's, it's, it's going to just get worse. And he gets troubled and then hops into the shower and he says, God, what did I just hear? What did I just, what's happened? How are we going to do this? And then he gets into his car and he drives off to the office. And, it's on, and again, he says, God, come on. We, you have to speak to me about this. I need to, I need to. And so the days go, and Day by day, he's just talking to God about it. He didn't flatten his face on the carpet, threw the bucket of oil over him, ripped his cloth, and said, Yerra. No, he didn't. He spoke to God about it. He says, God, there is a solution for this thing. We have to do this together. I want to do this. I'm willing and I am available. And so we see that how God used it. So the question then is, well, there's three questions. When should I pray? Why should I pray? And how should I pray? Those are good questions. So let's start off with when should I pray? Immediately. <laughs> That's what I thought when I thought, well, when should I pray? I, just, I need God right now. I don't know about you guys, but it's true. I need God immediately. I, I need to talk to Him. I need to be connected with Him. Um, I was actually wanted to say this later, but I think I should say it now. But um, you know, even during this week, um, circumstance, things, just you know, life just pressurizes you. And so when I got into the car, I'm like, Jesus, you better help me. And so I'm listening to KFM, and uh, <laughs> the way yeah, I heard Taylor Swift's song called "Shake It Off." And so, God, when I got out of the car, God said to me, son, all you have to do is just shake it off. And, but that was prayer for me, believe it or not. Maybe that would shake your religious box a bit this morning, but that's prayer. I'm communicating with God, and God's communicating back with me. And there's no box or thing I have to put Him into in order for Him to speak to me. He can speak to me through a secular song, Christian song, whatever He wants to do and how He wants to do it. He's He's king of kings. He gave her the gift to speak to me. So he, maybe she wrote the song for me for that morning. So I'm shaking it off. Because I'm not going to allow things to hold me down and make me fearful. But that was just a moment. And you know what? Nehemiah could easily have gone into fear. But he said, I need to pray. That's the first thing. When we should pray is when we know that it's a priority. When we connect it with God, we make prayer a priority. And it's a constant communication. An actual fact, it's quite big that Nehemiah first went and prayed because if you look at his position, he was a man of action. So he was a manager, organizer, leader. He was second in charge. Every, the whole country had to run under him. He had to taste the wine of the king. Pastor Louis said he wasn't the barman. He was, he was actually, a, he, he used to be the, the main bodyguard. So he would taste the wine before the king would drink it so that if it was poisoned, he would die first. So it was quite an important job. And so, yeah, interesting job. Because <laughs> if, yeah, if the king dies, he dies, I guess. So well, he should die first. Anyway, make that your own. Um, now I think myself interrupt. Anyway, Nehemiah was an organizer and motivator and managed. He liked to do things. But you know what? When he heard the news, he stopped himself and he said, I need to get with God. I need to connect with my father. This is a very serious matter. And so he went and he prayed first. He didn't start a committee. He closed his door behind him. He says, God, I need to connect with you. 
the situation is troubling me. I've got compassion for my people. I believe that you've called me, but let's talk this through. How do you want to do this? He didn't just go off and fix a plan, think up a plan, stir up a plan, ask a couple of people for a couple of opinions and think what he should do. He said, no, God, you, I want to download from you because I'm connected to you. We need to be connected with God. He wants to download things into our hearts that will give us a plan for what He wants to do in and through us. Maybe there's cities in your life this morning that are in ruins. Maybe there's situations and circumstances at work or family or wherever where the city is in ruins. And God's got a plan for it, but we need to get the download from Him. So when should you pray? Immediately. Prayer is not a chore. It's communication. Number two, why should I pray? Number one, it tells you that you're depending on God. There's a dependence on God. Say, God, I need you. You know what's so awesome? It's that I'm not there yet, but when your kids come to you and they just tell you who they, they love you for who you are, mine's small, so they want to tell you who you are so they can get something. Okay, so they fall. They just want you to put on some sort of program so they can watch and they want it now. But the reality is, is that when we, when, when we come to God and we tell Him how we depend on Him, He loves to hear that. He loves to hear that you need Him because He wants to do things in your life. So the fact that you, 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 you are approaching Him and saying, I can't do this on my own, I need you, it draws something out of Him. It makes Him go, yes, I'll do this. He wants me to be in His life. He wants me, she wants me to, to, to be with her in the situation. I'm there. I'll be there because that's who he is. And so it shows that you're dependent on God. People who are disconnected don't think prayer is a, is a priority. They don't think they, they ask the question, well, why should I pray? Why can't I just fix it and Google it? You know what? But the reality is that Google can't answer that for you. God wants to because he's in a relationship with you. He wants to walk you through a process as Nehemiah went through a process. Those 52 days must have been awesome 52 days that he built the wall, but it probably must have been the most difficult as well. Because it was a process. And God prepared his heart for that. And so God wants to prepare our heart. So we need to depend on him. And John 15 just speaks about that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. It's the only way we can bear fruit. It's when we, there's that scripture. You guys know that scripture in John 15. Um, uh, where it says, uh, abide in the, it talks about the vine and being abiding in him and him in you and let his love abide in you. And it just talks about being in relationship and connection with God. And that's, that's when we depend on him, when we need him. It also shows when we do that, we're in humility. Because God gives grace to the humble but opposes the proud. Proud and arrogance is when we just go and think we can fix it ourselves and do it our own and get our, our ten point plan out and and fix the thing, but even though, even though you do have the ability to fix it, that's where true humility gets tested, because then you know, say, God, I'm, I, I know what I can do, but I want to know what you want to do, and that's the total dependence on God. Number two, why should I pray? It lightens the load. As I said, shake it off. God wants to carry the load with you. That's part of being in partnership, is you don't carry things alone. You're not a silo. You don't do things on your own. God's not up there. In fact, He says, I want to be with you. Emmanuel, God with us. He's in you, with you. He wants to partner with you. Okay? You know, the reason why Nehemiah prayed is because he was distressed. He heard bad news. He was obviously a sensitive person, very compassionate, and he felt things very deeply. But rather than simply mourning and complaining, he prayed. I think he took the problem to God and he, and he said, God, I don't want to wallow in self-pity in this, but we need to do something about this. How many times when we have load, when, you've got a, when you feel pressure of life and when you hear news like heavy news, you, you, you feel like you're carrying a weight. And all, even Peter writes, he says, Cast all your cares onto him because he cares for you. He loves you. But now sometimes because we think we have to make this thing work, 
We, we have to fix it and carry the load. Carry your cross. You know, and you know what? Jesus carried the cross for you and for me. And so he wants to carry the load with us. He says, you don't have to go through this alone. But self-pity is a very big thing because sometimes prayer sounds like this. Lord, this problem is huge. And all God hears how huge the problem is and how bad you feel about it and the feelings. You're feeling saddened and worried. And, 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 and before you know it, you've built yourself a nice little whippy of self-pity. And um, I, I, I did something for Leanne this week um, just for the Ladies Beyond Conference and I saw a, a clip where they interviewed um, Dee Harris. Um, she's an amazing, amazing woman and she's gone to be with the Lord last year. But she said this, self-pity is the devil's babysitter and I don't want to be babysat by the, de by the devil. And so sometimes what happens is we wallow in the problems, instead of shifting our focus to who God is and what He wants to do. Because this morning, what Luan did was very profound. When you take the focus off yourself and you put it on Him, God begins to give you perspective. It opens up the way for you to allow Him to speak to you. Because God can't speak to you if you just focused on whatever is happening in and around you. Because all you focus on is how you're feeling, your fears, whatever you're going through. And God's like, okay, I know that. Chill. Let me speak to you. Just look up. I, wanna, I just want to, I just want to speak to you. And when you hear him, suddenly something changes when his voice gets to you. Because that's what he does. When he speaks something, and he speaks something into your heart, it can change the atmosphere of your heart. So he wants to carry the load with you. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up on their wings and rise up close to God, like eagles rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. So when we bring our load to Him, when we wait on Him, when we partner with Him, He will give us strength. There's a surrender that needs to take place in our hearts regarding that. And number three, why do I pray? Why should I pray? It releases God's power. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, God says, call to me. I will answer you. Not I might answer you. I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. Prayer needs to go with faith because faith is like your bank card. You put it in and you can draw from God. Faith draws from God. God's kingdom has got, God's got resource in His kingdom. Power. And we, I don't know about you, but I need God's power in my life to change things in my life. Because I can't change them. And when I pray and I come in faith to Him, it gives me an opportunity to draw from His power. And He wants to give His power to you. He wants to release His power over your life. But we need to uh, we need to pray. We need to communicate and talk with Him. Prayer with partnered with faith turns the impossible to possible because He's the God of the impossible. And then, how should I pray? Whom it but? You can learn a lot by the kind of prayers that people pray. A desperate prayer or a canned prayer sometimes sounds like a dried up spirit. There's niks me worry, nothing left. A selfish prayer indicates a selfish spirit. It's like those prayers that sound like the Christmas list. It's trust lazy. You're trustless. Now, I've got nothing against that, what you're trusting God for. But if that's the only thing your prayers are about, we need to have a little bit of a self-assessment. <laughs> because you know what? God wants to give you stuff. God wants to bless your life. But it's not about the stuff. It's about your relationship with Him. And He wants you to trust Him. He wants to journey you through that. He wants to be something for you. It's not... It's the process of trusting Him. 
getting to know Him when you're desperate, when you need Him, because He wants to be something for you. And so those, those, um, those, uh, those Christmas lists sounds, is just a selfish prayer. Have you ever heard an impressive prayer? It's those prayers that the guy starts preaching while he's praying. And I was like that. Oh, I can recall it. When I was younger, I used to pray these. You quote scripture. And you pray. You want to even show the oak that's leading the prayer room that you can, you know, you can press your button if you, needs to, if you need to lead prayer. and Just like, oh, and, and have you ever heard that? I can even hear myself now when I, when I was praying that. And all it reveals is an arrogant heart. Arrogance. Arrogance and pride. Because you think your impressive prayer will get God to answer you. Your impressive prayer won't get God to answer you. In fact, arrogance and pride is where God says, okay, let's hang on a second. I'll just wait here till you're ready. And then when you pray from your heart and then you need me to do this and not how impressed I need to be with you because God's not impressed with us. He made us. <laughs> Why should I pray? It's because we need to come to a place where we say, God, I believe that you can do this because of who you are, not what you can do for me. I base my prayer on who he is. God, I believe that you can do this because you're the King of kings and the Lord of us. You're my Father. You love me and you care for me. And Nehemiah even said, God, I can ask you I'm asking you to come through for me. I'm asking you to help me with this plan because of who you are, not what you can do for me. And because Nehemiah approached God with that heart, God immediately said, I'm there. Let's do this. This guy's heart's right in the right place. And so we need to make sure our hearts are in the right place. Our part is just to talk. He'll, he'll do the, the action. So all we need to make sure is our heart's in the right place. It's as simple as that but it's the most difficult thing to do because we're human. Okay, but there's four things I quickly in how I should pray. I just want to say to you, how, how should we pray? There's four keys on, on how we pray and how we speak to God. I just mentioned it briefly now, but first of all, I need to base my request on God's character. God, I'm expecting, to answer, I'm expecting you to answer me because of who you are. God, you're faithful. You're great. You're a loving God. You're a wonderful God. God, you can handle this problem. You know, in, in verse 5, he says, O Lord, God of heaven. It's in Nehemiah 1 verse 5. O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his command. Nehemiah said three things about God. There. God, you're great, which means God, that's God's position. He says, God, you're awesome. He said, that shows his power. And he says, you keep your promises, which is God's covenant, God's promises. So you, we need to base our prayers on who he is. Base it on his character. He loves you. And Nehemiah acknowledged his greatness. God, I know that the situation is a mess, but you're bigger than it. You are able. You are faithful. You're true to what you've promised. He, he said, God, I want you to answer this prayer because of who you are. And I want to know that God. Because remember, part of that prayer, part of that communication is saying, God, I know that whatever around me is happening is in a mess, but I want to know the God of the impossible. I want to know the God that is all sufficient in every situation for me. The next thing is, shake the weight of sin by confessing it. Again, shake it off. But why? Because sin causes a blockage. It doesn't disqualify you this morning. Jesus' grace is more than enough. Love covers a multitude of sin. Grace empowers. But this morning, you need to understand, sometimes we need to just get to a place where we acknowledge that there, there is an issue in my life. 
I'm working through things. As long as we can acknowledge that we're working through things, that causes the unblock. But the moment we sit with it, we're aware of it, but we wanna do, don't want to admit it or do anything about it, God says, okay, wait, let's stop for a second. It's like, it's like having, have you ever bought a milkshake? And then you've got these thick straws and you've got to really suck to get, to the, get the milkshake through. It's like that. It's effort. And sometimes you suck so hard, nothing wants to come through. And then you get frustrated. And that's what happens sometimes with our lives. As we're trying, we're praying, we're praying, and God says, okay, let's just get real for a second. Remember what Paul wrote? He said, that God's power is perfected in my weakness. Just come as you are. Don't have to put your best foot forward. Just be where you are. Admit that there's something in your life, and I'm going to speak to you. That unblocks it. But sin, unfortunately, causes a blockage to hear God's voice. Because remember, in a relationship, it's not just us that's, do, that's doing the talking. We need to do some listening as well. Because He wants to talk back to you. James 5 verse 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It's dynamic and can have t- tremendous power. Just something I'm noticing here. He says first confess to one another and that's when you walk in a trust relationship with somebody else, maybe somebody that's just typing and said, listen, just pray with me. I just want conf- to lay this thing before God. Say, God, you know what? I'm struggling with this issue. I, I need you. Boom. Confession. But then he says, pray for one another so that you may be restored and healed because God's heart is for you to walk in wholeness and... Um, and righteousness, and he wants to restore you. And then he says, the righteous man, the prayer of a righteous man avenges much. So he says, confess and realize Jesus has done the work for you because you're not righteous for what you do, wrong or right, but through the work that Christ has done for you. So when you pray from that place where you can say, God, I'm struggling, I need you, I put my faith in you, it's your ability, not mine. And he says, you're right. Because you're right because of what Christ has done, not what you do. Anyway. Sometimes when we walk with weight, it hinders us. We need to unblock it. And also, when we confess those blockages, we, we accept responsibility for them. Part of our relationship with God is sometimes to walk that process through. Healing doesn't just come. You can't just confess and think it's over. There's a consequence. But you know what? God's so gracious. And even with walking that through, He he walks with you. He He speaks to you. He loves you through your mess. That's what I love about my relationship with God is I mess up so many times and my wife can witness for that. But He loves me even though. He loves me through things. He loves me through my hurt. Loves me through any mistakes I make. And that's why he says to me, shake it off, because I love you. You can't allow these things to hold you captive because it will block our communication. And I don't want our communication to be blocked. I want you to hear my heart because I've got a plan and a purpose, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Amen? We're in relationship. That's why we communicate. Thirdly, declare the promises of God. Nehemiah 1 verse 8 to 9 says, Remember the instructions you gave to your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place they've chosen in my name. He says, that's a promise. God promised them that if they come to a place where they confess, He will bring them back. There's a promise in that. What are the promises of God for your life? What are some of the promises that God's given you? Do you realize this morning, even in worship, we declare things. 
We declare things. Maybe you sit at work. The environment's hectic, it's toxic. Maybe your family environment is toxic. I'm not talking, maybe it's your current family, your greater family, whatever. But do you realize that when you begin to say, God, I need you to change this environment. I need you to change something. It's the same as Nehemiah said, God, we need to do something about this. This thing is in ruins. Relationships are in tatters. I need you to come in and change this. Then we begin to declare what God says. God, you are faithful. God, you've made me the head and not the tail. God, the plans, are, your plans for me are good. Your ways are not my ways. Higher are your ways than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. You begin to declare who he is. Begin to declare his promises that he's made for your life. That's in his word. And you begin to see, not necessarily immediately how the atmosphere around you changes, but the atmosphere of your heart begins to change. Your attitude begins to change. The way that you respond begins to change. And then when that person comes, who is maybe so abrupt at work, that challenges every fiber of who you are, maybe just because you declared God's promises in your workplace that morning. And that's, it's not going standing. Don't look stupid, please. Don't go into the middle of the office and just begin to declare something. I mean, but just walk in and just say, God, Sit at your seat. Say, God, thank you for this place. You've called me to this place. Thank you that your heart is for every single person in this office to change and to get to know you. So I declare that every soul in this place is going to turn to you in Jesus' name. When you do that, things begin to change. Maybe the way that you respond, you realize, hey, 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 he's responding this way, but maybe I just have to show him some love. You guys get, declare God's promise. De declare God's promises over your life. Because he wants to build, rebuild the walls in your life too. Maybe your life is in ruins this morning. He wants to rebuild you. Pa prayer transforms God's promises into performance. And I'm not saying performance out of strife. It means God brings action to what he says. Because you see reminding God. Does God need reminding? No, but it just helps us remind ourselves that He's good, that He's faithful, that He says who He says He is, and that He will come through for you. Again, Nehemiah says, God, I'm basing my prayer on who you are, then I'm admitting who I am, and then I'm reminding of what you said. Remember those things. Remind him of what you've said, admit who you are, and remind yourself of who he is. Then fourthly, be very specific what you ask for. Nehemiah 1 verse 10 says, They are your servants, your people whom you've redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man who was the king. Nehemiah was specific. He didn't say, God, please help me not to fail. He said, God, give me success. Because the only other alternative is to fail. And realize it's a big thing that he was asking. He was asking for three years of leave. He was asking for, um, as the second in charge, to leave his post for three years to go and do something in his hometown that's got nothing to do with his king. So why should I grant you leave? He needed to have a visa to go through different cities. And he needed to work with the people back in Jerusalem that are dismayed. There's Mudulus, the city, they've got, they've got no hope. And he's got a, all those ingredients, he's got a worker. So if I was him, I would also ask for success. Because otherwise I'll fail. It's a, it was a big task up ahead of him. And you know what? We need to be able to go boldly before God. Say, God, give me success. You are allowed to ask God to give you success. And again, not success as the world defines it. It's just aligning your heart with his heart. Aligning yourself with his plans and purposes for your life. That's success. And that's what Nehemiah did. He aligned himself with what God said. 
He wanted to be successful. Also, when you pray, and you pray for success, be willing to be part of the solution. Nehemiah was willing to go to Jerusalem, and he was available, no matter what. If you're going to pray, and if I'm going to pray, say, God, give us a solution. Make sure we want to be a part of it. And not just sit back, we've prayed now, now, we'll wait. Because it's not going to happen like that. Be part, be active. And remember, God's bigger than your problem. He's amazing. He's awesome. So you know what, this morning... I think the message I want to bring across is that God longs to be in relationship with you. Prayer is not just this religious thing this morning. And part of your partnership and relationship with God is talking with Him. And realize that His heart towards you is love. And that that's what He, he, he's, he looked at Jerusalem and He said, Oh, my, my people. My people. And Nehemiah felt that compassion my people and this morning I believe God's saying to you this morning my son and my daughter I love you I want to be with you I want to be in relationship with you I want to talk to you and I want to teach you how to speak to me because there's certain aspects in the way that we communicate with him where he wants us to come with faith So I'm going to pray for us this morning. Can we stand? I believe it's a good moment to stand. God wants to accelerate you. Amen. God wants you to be successful. And we do it with Him, not without Him. And so Father, I thank You this morning that You want to advance us this morning. You want to move us forward. Father, You want to bring restoration and healing to our lives. You want to bring wholeness to our lives this morning. And Father, right now, I want to pray for every single person standing this morning. I pray where there needs to be a reconnection, reconnect them, Father. I pray, Father, where they are trusting for a word and for a download, I pray that they'll get that word or that download from you. Father, I pray this morning, God, where people are feeling hopeless, where they look at certain things in their lives and, and it feels like the city of Jerusalem's walls that are broken, I thank you that you'll come into those moments and you'll restore hope and bring hope in those areas, Father. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as we as a people go out this week into our workplaces and our family lives, Father, I pray that we will not be religious about speaking to you, Father, but we'll do it every second of the day. And Lord, I pray that you are faithful. It's not our ability year but it's your ability to speak to us father and i pray that you will speak to us father as a people to every single individual standing here for where they're at in their lives that they'll hear your voice father and i pray that when you when they hear your voice i pray that you release something in their hearts do something in their lives and to set a plan and a process in action where you want to bring victory into their lives in jesus name amen May you be blessed. May you hear God's voice. And don't forget to talk to Him this week. Okay.